family businesses uh, are an interesting category for a variety of reasons. Uh, family businesses are interesting because family businesses are, they can be the backbone of the economic future and the wealth development for a particular family. It can also be the foundation of a community. You can look at a family and say, wow, this family has really contributed to our community. It can be a legacy. Uh, it can be a, a great, wholesome experience to interact with a family business. And for that reason, I'm always attracted to family businesses because I, I, I wonder whether the families realize what they have. You know, it's every entrepreneur's dream to have their family carry the business forward and to do something with it. What I often see is that families sometimes don't even think of what the founder does as a business, unless it's, it's so overwhelming and significant that it's something they can't quite avoid. So there are businesses that evolve into major chains and, and major names, and you, you certainly, certainly can't ignore the fact that this big name exists that your family created. But often it's a more modest business and the children of the founder might not see it as such, the spouse might not see it as such. They see it as a good living, they see it as a reasonable way to make a living, but not, not, may not realize there's a lot of potential there. So for that reason, a lot of family businesses don't survive the founders. And the founder passes on, and the result is that the business um, goes away. Or if the business hobbles along through the next generation, and maybe even another generation, the grandkids, it ultimately does not survive because the original vision, the drive, the passion, the ingenuity, the entrepreneurship of that founder is not present. So how do you refresh a family business? How do you build a family business? Uh, over the years I've worked with family businesses and, and sometimes I've had the pleasure of working with a couple in business. And it's very exciting to me to see two people really committed to growing something and, and everyone has got you know, the, every, the, the stakes are high when, they, when it's a couple. Um, but one of the challenges in why a family business does not grow is because, like all businesses, it, it develops in phases. Businesses develop in phases. It's not like one day you wake up in your Walmart or you wake up in your, you know, some huge brand name. It, it takes time. And the first phase can be such a challenge that many times businesses don't get beyond that first phase. And that first phase is your proposition as a business. You know, what do we offer? What's unique about us? And how do we find clients or customers to, to, to buy our products and services? That phase alone can keep a family business stuck for a generation because they're just focused on that phase. They're just focused on every day getting someone to come into the store or getting someone to come to the salon or getting someone to come to the restaurant or getting someone to um, book a, a um, event or whatever it is they do. So that idea of the basic proposition of the business and satisfying clients who buy into the proposition of the business can be it. Now the second phase of a business that's so important is brand equity. And that's where family businesses often miss the mark. You see, they don't realize that there's any equity there. You know, they, they're, they're looking at the cash flow of the business or maybe the real estate of the business and they see it all as very modest. And the reality is that for many businesses, the equity is in the relationship you have with your clients. That's where the equity is. It's not so much in the, the product that you've developed, uh, even the location. It's, it's not the, the service, 
but it's that in the mind of the client, this is a valuable business and this is an important business and they believe in you more than they believe in another brand name. So how do you turn that into money is the question. And this is where a lot of family businesses go wrong because they just don't see that as money. And you, um, uh, you can miss the mark in a family business if you don't recognize that that's the thing that's most important. Because you will do all kinds of other things thinking that it's important. You will um, you know, try to, uh, I don't know, rent out a room in your business to, to the local business um, uh, meetup group. You'll try to, uh, 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 you, you'll get very focused on Instagram and places like that because you think the the image and attention that you create is really important. And believe it or not, it's an old-fashioned basic thing that most family businesses have to do and will not do. <laughs> and that is build a relationship with their customers and clients that is uh, strong, that is tangible, and that they can put their finger on. Now, what do I mean by put my finger on? If you can't put your finger on the name, the address, the city and state, and other facts, phone number, email address, other facts about the clients that you serve, you don't have a relationship with them. Your relationship is not going to come just by having a nice website up, by running a sale, by doing all those things. You have to go back to the early days of business development, that general store where the person who ran the store knew the people in town. And they came to the general store because that person would service them in a different way. That's the power of a family business. And when a family business begins to behave like it's some big business out there and forgets that connective tissue with the marketplace, that's when it begins to decline and that's what can cause a business to go away. I'll give you an example. Um, my mother uh, was very involved in community activities. She was involved in the, in the block association where we grew up in Brooklyn. She was involved in various social groups. She was involved in church. She was involved in the Girl Scouts. She was involved in a lot of these things. And growing up, I used to see in her uh, nightstand a book that was frayed with her handwriting in it, and it was called the phone book. <laughs> and in this phone book, it was there was writing all over it, all over the pages, all over the inside, everywhere. And in fact, when I got older, I used to rewrite the phone book for her. And that actually actually became a, pr a practice that I would do for myself. Every year I would rewrite this phone book that I had. But the, the interesting thing about this phone book, which was falling apart, is when there was an event, uh, not even when there was an event, my mother would be on, go through this book and she would call people, and, hey, how are you doing? Oh, is John in college now? Oh my goodness, I can't believe how time has, has flown. You know, our block association meeting is coming up. You know, we're having it at this person's house or having it at our house. And she would make these phone calls and just engage people in the community, engage the, the, um, the other women that were in the women's group, engage people. And, and, and so if someone had, passed and there was a funeral and there was a wake, you know, all these people would come out because there was a relationship with that person. You could put your finger on the name and address of that person and you knew something about them. Same thing with bus outings, uh, picnics, um, church outings, uh, dinner dances, all sorts of things. It happened as a result of the phone book. The phone book was the focal point. Now, that phone book made many things possible. And 
that was the nucleus of the the family business, so to speak, which was community engagement. Now she was also involved in real estate and other things, and she would um, uh, sell homes, she would uh, rent um, apartments, she would do various things, but the focal point was this phone book and her interaction with the people that she would encounter on the block, that she would get in the car and drive to. It was a person-to-person -person connection. Now let's look at this in the context of a family business. What did they do? They put up a website and they, they collect names and, or, or, or inquiries, but they don't take them seriously. You don't know who you're writing to, you're just putting it in like a box and hitting send. You don't know if anybody ever reads it. Rarely do you get an email. Rarely do you get something from them that says, hey, thank you for coming in, it was great to see you. Nothing personal, very generic. If they send it at all, do you get coupons? Do you get specials? Do you get things that recognize the individual? There's no community development. And that's what happens with a lot of family businesses. They get caught up in all of the other pieces of the business, ordering the products and services, making sure they're on the shelves, making sure they open up on time, making sure the recipe is done, um, dealing with an endless stream of personnel issues. But they don't connect with the people who drive the business, which is the relationships that exist. Now, this strategy is available to any family business. How many people do you know? Where are they? What do you know about them? What have you offered them? And when's the last time you talked to them? That's the nucleus of why the business is valuable. And if you can really nail that and focus on that, You'll be able to build the business, you'll be able to refresh the business, you'll be able to take the business in new directions, you'll be able to invent new products and services, you'll be able to do all of the things that, that your business needs to do because you're treating your clients like family. You see, a family business is not just about you owning it, it's about treating your clients and your customers like family. When you understand that that is the secret, you will grow, you will refresh, you will build, you will innovate, and you will have something of value. And it'll be hard to kill that business because there'll be so many people who will be rooting for that business to su succeed. And you'll feel an obligation to serve them well. Don't be anonymous, don't be disconnected, be connected in a deeper, deeper way. And the great thing is that technology today enables you to do that. You can do that so well by blending technology with personality and with old fashioned feet on the streets, knocking on doors, shaking hands, saying hello, connecting with people and making sure you know your clients. Well, I want you to try that. And uh, if you like this tip, Give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. Share it with someone. Uh, share it with your family if they need to hear it. And make sure you subscribe to my channel because I have a lot more coming. I'll see you next time.